Hey guys, today I'll be demoing a few overdrive pedals. Uh, overdrive pedals are my favorite type of guitar pedals actually because there's so many of them, uh, a wide range of them. I think overall they probably are the most popular type of guitar pedals and there's uh, many different variations of them. Uh, overall, overdrive pedals, many of them stem from a few different types I would say. Um, and I'm being generalizing here, right, because um, I think a lot of people probably know what these types are and we can kind of separate a lot of these overdrives on the market into a few different distinct categories um, and it's up to you guys if you think they sound similar or not because you know people would just be like oh all overdrives sound similar and that could be the case but I think for a lot of guitar pedal aficionados uh, like myself and others uh, would probably know that there's a few different broad categories you can kind of generalize them into. Okay, so I'm going to talk about five different overdrive types here and uh, kind of just demo and compare each one. So the first type is called the transparent overdrive and I know that's a kind of a big buzzword a lot of people use and um, people are like they don't allow they don't like using this word because it's so vague but transparent uh, generally means keeping your core guitar tone intact it doesn't do anything crazy with uh, frequencies or anything um, like it doesn't try to unnaturally bump up any frequencies it just generally keeps um, uh, your guitar tone balanced I would say and there's a few different types of guitar pedals uh, that really like your guitar tone shine through while giving you more gain which is basically what an overdrive pedal is supposed to do so right now I have um, the camera focused on the MXR Timmy uh, because that to me is one of the uh, one of the um, the faces of the transparent pedal I would say it's like one of the pedals that a lot of people bring up when they talk about transparent pedals is the Timmy uh, there's also a whole bunch of other pedals right I mean up the blues breaker circuit which is technically an amp in a box uh, type of pedal but those cir that circuit, many people say that's a very transparent circuit. So that, you know, many bluesbreaker style pedals like the Morning Glory or the Snouse Black Box, many people talk about that. Um, some other pedals people mention include the Wampler Euphoria, which is one of my favorites. Um, that's actually an extension of the Timmy. Um, you also have the Career Light Speed, uh, which is a that's a uh, hyped pedal I would say I haven't tried it before but it's a pretty hyped pedal the Fairfield Bar Barbershop which I have tried before it's a nice pedal it's interesting and it's also fairly transparent um, and yeah a lot of people just talk about uh, these other very transparent type pedals I guess the uh, the King of Tone or the Prince of Tone or Duke of Tone uh, are fairly transparent as well but those are all kind of derived from the Bluesbreaker circuit so yeah many of these um, quote unquote transparent type pedals are out there on the market and um, I think this is the one that is probably the best type for stacking other pedals with because they're so tr because they're transparent that means they keep your core guitar tone intact so when you layer another guitar pedal on top of it um, this pedal is basically serving mostly almost as a, as a boost or like a you know a gain stacker right so if it doesn't change the core guitar tone then the transparent overdrive is essentially just adding um, the gain and boost so that makes the transparent type of overdrive pedal this this pedal type probably the best for stacking other pedals with so anyways this is a bit of a demo of the MXR Timmy so you guys can kind of understand uh, what a transparent type pedal is like so so my main guitar tone is a Fender Stratocaster on the um, neck and middle pickup. This is what I usually use going into a Super Achille, which is a very neutral amp. Uh, so the Super Achille is really meant to take pedals, so it's it's a very neutral sounding amp. And um, I'm just using my Fender Stratocaster here. Everyone knows what a Strat sounds like, right? Everything tone controls volume up to ten. Okay, one. sound of Fender single coil pickups. Everyone knows what that sounds like. Okay, so for the Timmy, uh, the thing about the bass control is that it's uh, adding the amount of bass that's pre-clipping. So I actually want to turn this down because if you turn up the bass to noon, then uh, what that will do is actually add bass and then that will actually kind of color the tone, which is not something that uh, we want in a transparent pedal. So I'm actually going to dial down the bass so that we don't color the tone that much to keep it transparent. And um, Gain is set to middle, treble set to middle, volume set to middle, and there's three different clipping stages here. Three different um, type of settings here. The middle one is just a higher headroom. This is the cleanest setting. It's with the switch in the middle. It's a high headroom and it's symmetrical clipping. So again, this is a clean tone. So Timmy 
on. So you guys can hear that it doesn't really add um, any kind of like distinct artificial type of coloring or frequencies to the tone. It's really maintaining my core guitar sound. So. This type of pedal, the transparent type of pedal, is really good for low gain to medium gain and it's really good at preserving your guitar, your core guitar sound and really great at stacking other with other pedals and also really great as a boost. That's how I'm using my MXR Timmy mostly is as a, as a boost. Um, not exactly a clean boost but almost, you could make it a clean boost, right? It's just by pushing up the volume and pushing down the gain and then uh, it's basically a clean boost like this. Adding the clean boost. Pretty much just a clean boost in this setting if I turn up the volume but turn down the Yeah. So, yeah, I would say this transparent type of overdrive pedal is my favorite. Uh, it's just so versatile. You can, uh, it's really great for light gain to medium gain. You easily stack it and it's really great as a clean boost. So, yeah, again, other popular pedals in this category, Morning Glory, Black Box, um, Duke of Tone or Prince of Tone, um, Career Light Speed, yeah, Barbershop, these are all really great uh, transparent pedals. Uh, Euphoria, I think I mentioned these. Um, it's really good for preserving your core guitar tone. But another good thing about the Timmy especially is that it can actually be higher gain if you want. So if I want it to be higher gain, I can. So yeah, if I want it to be higher gain, I can, but then I dial it back down if I just want to have, yeah, if I just want to uh, have it be more of a clean boost, I dial it back down. So yeah, um, really like this type of overdrive. So another pedal I have to mention, um, and I guess it would belong in the transparent category uh, since it's a bluesbreaker circuit technically, is the Wampler Pantheon. The Wampler Pantheon is actually inspired by the Analog Man King of Tone, which itself is inspired by the Marshall Bluesbreaker circuit. So um, yeah, this circuit is, again, I've already mentioned a few bluesbreaker pedals already. Um, I guess people consider this in the transparent category, although it belongs in the amp in the box category as well. But yeah, the Wampler Pantheon is definitely in the Bluesbreaker slash King of Tone type category, which is a very versatile light to medium gain overdrive. So yeah, I guess that would belong in the transparent category as well. So I think that the Timmy is probably the best example of a transparent overdrive because it's one of the first pedals that most people think about when they think about the catch term transparent. Um, but there's a ton of other overdrives out there on the market which claim to be uh, fairly transparent. Um, so other than the Timmy, there's also the Greer Lightspeed, which is, I would say, fairly similar to the Timmy. Uh, it's not quite as versatile, but it has um, gives your tone a little bit more top end or high end to it. So um, it's, it's kind of its own thing, but uh, a lot of people like it as well. Uh, I would say it's fairly similar to the Timmy in a lot of ways. Um, I don't have it though. There's also the Earthquaker Westwood. A lot of people talk about that one. I haven't tried it. Um, the Fairfield Barbershop, which I have tried before. It's, it's a very unique circuit. Um, also very transparent, but very unique as well. The Wampler Euphoria, uh, which I have uh, tried before as well. Um, had that pedal for a very long time. Also sort of like the Timmy, but different in its own way. It's more higher gain than the Timmy. Uh, also very versatile. The Maxon VOP9, which I also had the um, the tube version, which is the TVO9, uh, fairly transparent, not quite as much as some of the other pedals I named, but fairly transparent. I'd say it also blends in a bit of clean. It's actually more closer to Klon, but anyways, Maxon claims it to be uh, transparent. Um, then there's any number of the Bluesbreaker derived circuits, like the any circuit derived from the Marshall Bluesbreaker. So the Marshall Bluesbreaker, obviously, which got a reissue recently. It's also the Snouse Black Box, uh, which I also have. The Morning Glory from JHS, very popular pedal. 
uh, the Analog Man Prince of Tone or MXR Duke of Tone and the Wampler Pantheon. These are all derived from the Marshall Bluesbreaker, which is a uh, fairly transparent circuit, but not like really, really transparent. I would say not fully transparent. You can dial it in to sound uh, fairly transparent, but by itself, I think it does add a little bit of low end. Yeah, I would say that the Bluesbreaker derived circuits to me, um, they're not like fully transparent as the Timmy because they add a little bit low end. Timmy, you actually you can actually dial down the bass and then it won't add in any bass at all. But I feel like the Marshall, Marshall Bluesbreaker type circuits inherently add a little bit of bass. Um, but yeah, they're they're relatively transparent still compared to uh, you know compared to some of these other overdrive pedals uh, that people know like Tube Screamer or the Nobels. Um, Nobels I think is transparent, but it's in a different way. Nobels ODR one also very popular pedal. I don't think it's as transparent as the pedals I named, but it's just more transparent than a Tube Screamer. Not saying much. The Klon right uh, is another overdrive pedal I'll be getting to. Um, not fully transparent either. Um, so the ODR1 and the Klon are somewhere in between, I would say. Not fully transparent, but more transparent than a Tube Screamer. Uh, Blues Driver, same thing. The uh, Blues Driver type circuit, um, I'll be talking about a little bit later as well. At the lower gain settings, it can be uh, kind of transparent, but then it does other things as well. It adds in a lot more gain compared to, uh, compared to these transparent pedals that I'm naming. Oh yeah, another transparent overdrive I have to mention is the Vemurum Janray. And uh, that is a very expensive pedal. Um, obviously, don't have it, uh, but I do have to mention it because uh, it is popular amongst some players who um, who rave about it. Uh, but yeah, it's just very hard to get because it retails for like three hundred fifty dollars US. So yeah, very expensive pedal, but that also comes up sometimes in these transparent overdrive conversations. So I have to mention it, the Vemurum Jamray as well. Okay, the next type of overdrive pedal is uh, what people call the K-Type. And they call it the K-Type because it's derived from the Klon Centaur. The Klon Centaur is a very famous overdrive pedal. It's highly sought after. It fetches high prices on the used market. And a lot of um, Klon type overdrive pedals, kind of like clones, they call them clones with a capital K because yeah, they're basically modeled on the Klon Centaur. So this pedal is the Wampler Tumnus, which is probably one of the more popular uh, Klon type pedals. Um, but there's, you know, there's so many Klon type pedals. I have to mention the KTR as well. The KTR is basically the, um, it's, it's a Klon, but made cheaper with uh, surface mount parts. And it's made by the same designer of the Klon, Bill Finnegan. Although I'm not sure how easy the KTR is to find anymore. But of course there's that. And then there's the, uh, so many other clones, right? Um, Serotone makes the, uh, the Centura. And then you have the J-Rocket Archer. They make a few different archers, actually. They're quite popular. Uh, MXR Sugar Drive, Electro Harmonic Soul Food. Um, and, oh, uh, yeah, the PRS Horse Meat as well. I forgot that PRS actually made their own Klon pedal as well. Yeah, so many, uh, I think JHS makes a, a Nauta Klon that you can build yourself. The uh, Mythos Mjolnir is another one. I mean, there's, there's so many other, uh, yeah, pedals, right, that basically clone based. The Keely Oxblood is, is another one that's kind of like a clone. So yeah, uh, many, many others, but I'll be focusing on the Wampler Tumnus, which uh, I think is probably one of the best out there. Um, also the Wampler Tumnus Delu Deluxe would be good too, but I don't have that one since it's uh, not side mounted jacks. Um, I only go with pedals with side mounted jacks for my pedal board just to make it easier for me. They actually, Brian Wampler actually released a newer version that even has the same germanium diodes as the original Klon Centaur, which is cool. Uh, I consider the Klon Centaur a very unique overdrive pedal. Really, it deserves its own category because it is unique. It's not a transparent type pedal. So people get that confused. They think of the Klon as a transparent overdrive. It's not a transparent overdrive. It's in its, it's, in its own category. It actually does add a bit of a mid-range boost. Um, so it, it does push up the mid-range a bit, but not as much as a Tube Screamer. Uh, also, it has this unique clean blend, uh, where if you turn up the uh, the gain, it actually blends a bit of clean into it at every stage. So it's it's really unique. Um, yeah, I just that's why it's its own category. So it's it's really a unique type of overdrive. And Bill Finnegan, the original designer of the Clone Circuit, deserves praise for basically inventing an entire category of overdrive pedals essentially by himself so um yeah anyways my core guitar tone i'm gonna turn up the volume on this one and first many people like to use the clon as a clean boost uh it it can definitely do that it's not probably what it's best at but it can i i think the transparent type of overdrive pedal like the timmy is better at doing the clean boost but many people use the clon type for doing clean boost so we'll just do that first so clean sound 
then we turn on the terminus. You guys can hear that it's not transparent, right? You guys can hear that it is calling the tone, even when I turn the uh, gain down, which is not using the diodes. Yeah, it definitely can boost your tone and add gain, but it's not transparent. It will affect the tone. That's why it's not actually the best clean tone, uh, clean boost, I mean. Yeah, so people using the Klon Centaur as a clean boost, I mean, it's not the best clean boost. Uh, the, the Timmy or other transparent pedals like the Bluesbreaker types are, are much better at that. So we'll, um, we'll turn up the gain now to about noon. So you guys can hear the Klon actually does have a decent amount of gain on tap. I would consider this as a medium gain overdrive. Whereas like the, the Timmy and others will be like low to medium gain. Uh, this Klon, I would say solidly a medium gain overdrive. So yeah, you can hear there's a decent amount of gain on tap even with it at noon. And if I turn it up more, right. has a decent amount of gain on tap. So anyways, um, we'll turn up the treble. It's actually just a great sounding overdrive when you turn up the gain. So you guys can actually hear that it's very different than a tube screamer um, because it, it keeps a bit of the clean tone and everything. It doesn't push up the mid range as much. It, cle it keeps a bit of clean tone. Uh, like even at the highest gain settings, you'll just, it blends a bit of clean in there. So that's really kind of unique about the Klon. So no matter how much you push up the gain, it'll never get muddy because there's always a bit of clean tone in there. So it's really cool pedal. <laughs> I think Rest Shell did a video on this and he said that the Klon is his favorite type of pedal because it really is in the middle between the transparent type and the tube screamer type, uh, which is another type we'll get into later on. So yeah, uh, it really is in the middle and it's um, it's just a great overdrive. You can use it as a boost, but um, I prefer it as an overdrive. I think it's much better as, at doing that. And it's a medium, very nice medium gain overdrive pedal uh, that does color your tone, but not too much. But it does give uh, just a great overdriven sound. Compare this with the, um, let's see the gain. And it's also a great stacking pedal too. It's great to stack the Klon. John Mayer obviously uses Klon to stack with a Tube Screamer, but you can use it to stack with a whole bunch of other pedals. Like this is the Timmy. Right, kind of like a lower gain over there. And then uh, you stack it with the Klon. I just want to show you guys the pedal tone. So these are, in my opinion, the best types of overdrive for stacking with other pedals. They play very well together with, with other pedals or just together. The transparent type of overdrive with the Klon type is great. It keeps most of your guitar tone intact. Uh, adds just a little bit of coloring, but um, yeah, it's it's just a great um, recipe for stacking. So yeah, I mean, you can also do a Marshall like Bruce Breaker type circuit, uh, like a Morning Glory or something, or a Duke of Tone and stack it with the Klon type. I mean, yeah, lots of possibilities, very versatile. Um, both of these 
guitar overdrive types. Like both of these types, the Klon type and the transparent type, are the best for stacking with other pedals, I think. And these two are probably my two favorites. Like the transparent overdrive is my overall favorite because it's so versatile. Uh, but then Klon right after that, I think is probably my next favorite overdrive type right after that. And uh, yeah, just so many uh, different things you can do with this combination, right? MXR, Timmy with a Tumnus, for example, transparent type with a Klon type. Just an awesome, awesome sound you can get out of this overdrive. Let's add up some more gain, we'll put it in the gain setting. The Timmy. So these are my two favorite overdrive types. All right, so the next overdrive type is what I would consider to be um, a very broad general type that doesn't have a specific sound to it, uh, but rather it's just a how these pedals are built. Um, they're called amp in a box type pedals, and they're really meant to emulate the sound of a tube amp. So the two most popular types of amp in a box types are, I would say, the Dumbo type and the uh, Marshall type. So these two are very... Uh, I guess they're, they're popular, there's a lot of different um, types of uh, pedals trying to emulate a Marshall or a Dumble amp. Uh, there's also other ones that try to emulate like a Fender or a Magnetone or a Vox, but I think for most of the time what I've seen on the market, most of these amp in a box pedals are either trying to do a Marshall sound, like a Marshall Plexi. The Blues Breaker technically is an amp in a box type pedal, uh, although people consider that a transparent type overdrive, um, and or a, a higher gain Marshall, like a JCM 800. Um, or, you know, the Dumbo Overdrive Special. These are like the, the type of amp in a boxes I see the most often. So I'll be focusing more on the Dumbo in a box slash Marshall in a box type pedals, but uh, there are a lot of other amps in a box type pedals as well. So, you know, some companies make Magnatone in a box, I guess. Uh, I know Origin FX has one of those. Uh, Supro in a box. Uh, Supro themselves make a Supro Drive, which is a Supro in a box, basically. Uh, JHS also makes something that's Supro in a box as well, I believe. Um, there's also Vox in a box. Vox actually made uh, themselves make uh, the Mystic Energy, I believe, Mystic Drive or something like that. That was basically a Vox in a box, uh, or AC30 in a box, and uh, Fender in a box. Um, a lot of companies make those as well, like kind of like a Tweed, like a Fender Tweed in a box. Uh, I know Love Pedals makes a few of those. So yeah, um, but I'll be focusing more on the Dumble in a box and Marshall in a box because those are actually the most common out of the amp in a box type pedals. Uh, so right now I have on my pedal board, uh, this is definitely probably one of the least known, uh, not as famous as the Tumnus or the Timmy of course, is the uh, Tube Stutter Light Keeper. And yeah, this pedal um, tries to emulate a Dumble Overdrive Specials clean channel. So it really is uh, has all the circuits underneath to try to be like that. Uh, so it's really trying to emulate that, uh, that exact circuitry of a Dumble Overdrive Specials clean channel. Um, so. This is what I have. I know there's a lot of other pedals out there. Uh, as for the Dumble types, I think the most famous is probably the uh, Hermita Zen Drive. Is the most famous for the Dumble type um, pedals. But they, you know, Kingsley makes a whole bunch. Uh, Tube Starter is a is a actually Kingsley is a Canadian company as well. Tube Starter is also a Canadian company that tries to do the Dumble type sound uh, for their pedals, and they do other amp in a box type effects. Origin Effects I know does a lot of really great amp in a box type effects. 
Um, and then, you know, you have stuff like the, the Plexi type emulator pedals, like the Keeley. Uh, the Keeley has a 1962X. They also have the, um, the El Rey Dorado, which is trying to be like a Marshall Plexi. Um, Catalan Bread is really good. That's a company that's really good at doing the amp in the box, the Dirty Little Secret, um, and a whole bunch of other pedals they have as well. Um, also the Wampler Plexi Drive, I think is very popular. The Love Pedals Purple Plexi, a uh, lot of different pedals, the exotic SL drive, a lot of pedals try to do that um, Plexi, the Marshall Plexi sound, I think that's one. Oh, JHS Charlie Brown is another one, and the Ramble FX Marvel drive, which I used to own. Uh, those are other Plexi in a box type pedals. Uh, but yeah, I don't have a, um, actually I do have a Marshall in a box, but uh, we'll go to that one after this. Um, this one is a Dumble clean channel in a box, essentially. Uh, so yeah. Again, not a specific sound associated with this overdrive type. It's more the the category of what they're trying to be. So, clean tone, and then uh, this is just gonna turn on. I have volume set to six in gain. You'll see that there's a three band EQ, and uh, there's knobs here that really uh, try to duplicate uh, what an amp would have. And then it's even powered by a 12ax7 preamp tube. So this is essentially a preamp in a box as well. So it's a preamp slash amp in a box and that's really what a lot of these amp and boxes especially origin effects origin effects and a lot of these two powered ones from kingsley and tube starter they're trying to be actually entire preamp in a box so they just take the circuitry of the amp um some of them i mean some of them even have tubes like kingsley and uh effectrode and tube starter will just straight up have tubes in them to just to replicate the exact feel of that uh preamp circuit but then other uh, other brands might just replace these tubes with FETs instead. So it really depends on what the um, format the pedal is in. But overall, they're trying to duplicate the exact circuit of the pedal. So, right, there's a double clean channel. So for me, this is an always on pedal because it just enhances my tone in every way. So without it, right, it's just kind of bland sounding, a little bit muddy. Then I turn on the light keeper. makes my tone um, just yeah just overall just increase it's, it's just uh, something special right with my guitar tone I don't know what uh, yeah it just doesn't sound the same without it see just without it and then with it on just tightens up my tone adds clarity um, yeah, it's just something I have to have on all the time. Otherwise, it just doesn't sound as good. So this is an always-on pedal for me. It's a preamp, amp in a box type of overdrive. Um, but yeah, in this mode, it's almost like it's not really an overdrive. I even though I have the gain on, right? I could turn the gain up to 10 so you guys can hear it. But it's very light gain. So this is not a pedal that's going to be heavy gain or anything. Um, and it really depends, like I said, other amp in a box, the ones trying to be like a Marshall Plexi or a JCM, those are obviously going to have higher gain. But uh, for this particular one, it doesn't have a lot of gain on tap. It's actually very transparent. And uh, yeah, you might, like even if turning up the gain to 10, even turning up the gain to 10, it doesn't have that much gain. It just thickens up my sound a bit. Uh, so overall, this is a pedal I always leave on. Um, I just leave the gain to about six or five or six. It doesn't really add that much gain at all, but it just makes my tone sound better. It's one of those, uh, yeah, you can consider it like one of those uh, boosters or preamp type pedals that just make your tone sound better. A lot of them are based on the Echoplex EP3, right? So uh, that's something that the exotic uh, EP booster does, um, or the Dunlop EP101, which I used to own, or the Callum Brad Epoch Boost, which I used to own. All these just try to, um, give you that special little extra thing. That's basically what this pedal's trying to do too. Go to career special request. Just adds that something a little extra on your tone to make it sound better. So yeah, look with... yeah, just everything sounds so lifeless without it. And then I add it on. There we go, there's the clarity back. There's the, the tone back. So yeah, just leave this always on. Um, so this is an always on pedal for me uh, and then this one has a switchable mid boost which actually boosts uh, You can it's basically a clean boost and it also boosts the mid as well You can actually choose to turn off the mid boost or the uh, the clean boost separately, but I have 
this for switch to turn on both the clean boost and the miz boost at the same time. So you guys can hear. So this is with the pedal, on. and then this is with the uh, mid and clean boost on. Actually, I'll show you guys um, just the boost. So this one's just a clean boost. I turn it on. So actually, without the without the boost. Clean boost turned on. Mid boost turned on. So yeah, uh, very versatile pedal. There's the three band EQ here as well. Just very versatile. Pedal. versatile pedal um, so it depends what pedal you guys are looking for for the amp in a box type this this one is very diverse because there's all all sorts of different pedals that try to to emulate different sorts of amps and stuff but uh, for me the tube stutter light keeper this one emulating the Dumble clean channel this one's a very versatile light gain overdrive pedal that pre pretty much is a preamp pedal and boost pedal for me I just always have to have it on because otherwise it doesn't sound the same so, but I'll leave it off for this video because you're comparing different overdrive pedals by themselves. So, yeah, I usually have this pedal always on. Alright, so the fourth type of overdrive is the Tube Screamer type. And uh, it is, of course, based on the Ibanez Tube Screamer. It's a very colored overdrive and it actually boosts up the mid-range or pushes the mid-range more. Um, actually, I think it, it just cuts down the lows and everything and then <laughs> leaves only the mid-range. But... I think everyone knows what a tube screamer sounds like. It's you know the most copied overdrive circuit, the most famous overdrive circuit. Uh, so I have in front of me the uh, Holy Grail. This is the G Town Holy Grail overdrive, which is actually a amp in a box type pedal. Um, so technically it belongs in that category, but I have it as kind of as in the tube screamer category as well because it essentially is a souped up tube screamer. That's what it sounds like. Um, it's a very versatile soup tube screamer because you can actually dial back down the mids on it But once you push out the mids it essentially is a tube screamer So that's why I'm gonna use this as I don't actually have any tube screamer like Actually like directly tube screamer type clones on my board because like I mean those are so common right you can find those everywhere Every company makes them so like Keeley would have the red dirt JHS has the moonshine Wampler has the both the moxie and the Clarksdale um, Earthquaker has the plumes like no matter which company you go to they all have some sort of tube screamer type of pedal um, East River Drive right by Electro Harmonics so yeah every company makes them <laughs> so it's it's so easy to find a tube screamer type pedal and of course that's not even talking about mentioning the Ibanez tube screamer obviously which obviously still makes the TS-808, TS-9 uh, reissues as well as the Maxon pedals which makes their own versions the OD-9, OD-808, uh, OD-820 and the, the two powered versions the TB, the TOD-9 um, actually they also make a kind of like a transparent type of overdrive too which is the VOP-9 I believe and the 820 which belong more in the transparent pedal category but yeah they definitely make tube screamer derived pedals because they're the original manufacturers of the tube screamer so anyways um, just to show you guys what a tube screamer tone sounds like because I've even though this is a technically a double style pedal it definitely does the tube screamer thing very well as well so I'm gonna turn up the volume and drive and uh, have it set to um, round right now set to open and I'll set the drive up and uh, no high this one has many different settings it essentially is a souped up tube screamer it has so many different settings on it um, and I'll turn I'll dial at the mids and essentially will be like a tube screamer so a tube screamer derived pedal anyways so yeah my, once again my clean tone and I push this one up the tone as mid-range many, 
people use the Tube Screamer as just kind of a solo boost uh, for just, you know, if you want something to cut through the mix. Yeah, if you want a solo, you know, solos usually you want, you want to cut through the mix. Anything you want to cut through the mix, you turn on the Tube Screamer and it cuts through the mix. That's what it's good for. type of overdrive is the most common type. Um, I would say it's not the type of pedal you want to leave on all the time. It's also not the uh, most versatile pedal. Um, this one is, but uh, most of the Tube Screamer types I would say is uh, not as versatile it, unless they're like modified, right? So, I mean, actually the, the Tube Screamer derived types I mentioned, right, like by a lot of those pedal companies, yes, they are more versatile than the original Tube Screamer. The original Tube Screamer and the Maxon Tube Screamers, not as versatile. Uh, because really, I think the best use of a tube screamer is to uh, cut through a mix with a solo or something like that. So if you need a good uh, way to like just, you need to, you need a good way to cut through the mix. If you're just uh, going for a solo or something like that, you turn on the tube screamer and it does that. I would not leave it on all the time like I would a uh, transparent type overdrive or or uh, my light keeper. So yeah, or even a Klon type. I might actually leave a Klon on all the like all the time in some cases, but not for uh, for the Tube Screamer type. It's just, it, it'll color the tone way too much. Um, so anyways, this is a very famous type of overdrive. Um, but yeah, once you turn it on, you know it's on, right? It's not like with the uh, transparent type. Like here's with the Timmy on. Oops, I have the gain up high on this one. There. Then once you hear the Tube Screamer, that's definitely going to color it more than the, uh, the transparent type. All right. Oh yeah, Way Huge makes the Green Rhino. That's another Tube Screamer clone. I mean, every company makes a Tube Screamer clone essentially. That's if they make any overdrives, they'll definitely have one that's based on the Tube Screamer. All right, then we come to the last type of overdrive uh, pedal, and uh, this this type of pedal is honestly the most versatile type, and it's called the Full Range Overdrive pedal. Uh, this type of pedal is actually based on the Boss Blues Driver. Uh, the Boss Blue Driver is, in a, is a unique circuit um, that can go from light gain all the way to near distortion. And this type of range is why it's called a full range overdrive because it's so versatile. You can, if you want light gain, you got light gain. If you want distortion, you got distortion. Medium gain, you got medium gain. So the Boss Blue Driver is the original, but there's also a Wazacraft version out now that um, adds a little bit more. Um, but many companies have made this type of pedal. Uh, this particular one I have in here is a. Uh, Boss Angry Driver, which is basically a blues driver modded to have the JHS Angry uh, Charlie in here as well. And that's why I said I do have a Marshall type pedal. I do have a Marshall in the box type pedal, and that's because it's in this pedal. Um, if I, yeah, if I want to, I can, I can just activate the uh, JHS Angry Charlie, and that's a JCM 800 in a box. So this is also an amp in a box, but it's also a full range overdrive as well. Um, so, yeah, the full range overdrive type, uh, I think the full tone OCD is very popular, that's a full range overdrive. The uh, JHS The Kilt, I believe is a full range overdrive. The Keeley Super Fat Mod, uh, that's a, a modification of the Blue Shriver, also full range type. So, yeah, this type of overdrive I think is uh, probably the most versatile. So, yeah, um, let me demonstrate that. So, just having the, going to the Boss Blue Shriver, so I just want to demonstrate the I have the, the blue driver mode is essentially just a blue driver. So, yeah. So, just my clean tone. Blue driver on. So, right now that's with the drive set to the middle. So, that's medium gain. I'll turn it down. If I turn down the blue driver, it's almost like a transparent type overdrive. Very light gain. See, like, very, very light gain. Just a little bit of, of uh, uh, what did they call it? A little bit 
bit of hair on the notes, that's it. <laughs> so yeah, that's a very light gain, near transparent, and then if I pull, dial up the drive, it'll just get hairier and hairier. Dial up even more. So yeah, you guys can hear, right? can hear the difference just by changing the drive knob right here just by changing the drive knob I can get so many different types of overdrive sounds out of it I mean it's such a huge range right anything from this can hear how much range this pedal has right it's not like the other overdrives where if I dial up the gain there's only a slight increase in gain no when I dial up the gain on this one uh, it just increases the gain massively so that's the difference between this one and the other overdrive types it's uh, this one really can go from low gain all the way up to near distortion level so that's why they call this the full range overdrive it is the most versatile overdrive type however uh, I would say if you're going for just one overdrive pedal, this is definitely the most going to fit most use cases, right? Because it's so versatile. But when you have um, a pedal board full of different overdrives and stuff, this is not the best for stacking, actually, because uh, because this one, because it such, has such a huge range of overdriven tones, yeah, if you ever want to dial up the gain on this, it's just going to uh, cover, it's going to mask all your other overdrives, basically. Mm. Yeah, honestly, this type of overdrive, um, it's really great versatile overdrive if you plan on using it by itself. Um, so I'd say if you just want to stick to one overdrive pedal, then pick the full range type, uh, you get the most sounds out of it. But if you're going to have a pedal board, um, stacking with other pedals is not really the best pedal for that, um, especially if you go into the high range because it's just going to mask all your other pedals actually. Uh, so, yeah, once you go into, um, you know, high distortion territory, it's just going to uh, overshadow the other pedals. So, I think it's okay if you just stick to the low gain. So, some people use a blue driver for stacking, but um, it's really only good at the low gain settings if you're going to do that. But then there's better options, I would say, like the transparent kind would be better for that. So, I would say that the, this type of pedal, the full range pedal, is usually uh, jack of all trades, master of none type. So it can do everything kind of well, like, you know, go from light gain all the way to near distortion levels, but it's actually not the best if you're gonna have a pedal board because you can have better pedals that can do it separately. So if I want to have really high gain, I can probably uh, get a distortion type pedal or I can just get um, an amp in a box to like pedal plexi um, in a box type pedal to do that. Uh, if I want low gain, I can get the transparent type overdrive to do that, medium gain, then get a clon type to do that. Uh, so, yeah, this is a this type of pedal. I would say very versatile by itself on a pedal board. Um, doesn't really play the best with other pedals. Plus, it's not really the best option for a lot of those um, overdrive ranges, I guess, because it's again great and versatile at a whole bunch of different gain tones, but it's not the best at those gain tones. So, I would say like yeah, if you have other overdrives to use at uh, those gain ranges, it's probably preferable to use those. So I've never s heard anyone say the blues driver is the best at any specific type of gain. It's just, it's versatile, that's it. <laughs> it's not really the best at any particular type of gain. Uh, but yeah, that's it guys. That's the five different types of overdrive pedals. Um, again, I'm probably just gonna demo a uh, short riff with each one so you guys can see. So this is going to be the blues driver type, everything's set to noon. <laughs>
screwdriver is definitely less color than the tube screamer. Uh, light keeper, let's do that. guys it's the five different types of overdrives I think overall um, my favorite is probably the transparent type of overdrive because it's so versatile on a pedal board it's easy to stack with other overdrives it's probably the best one to use on a pedal board honestly and then uh, the clon type after that um, also really great overdrive um, so yeah uh, I think there's definitely overdrives that don't that don't fit in these five categories of course uh, say the Butler tube driver is like maybe a full range type but I, I'm not exactly sure where to put it. Um, and then, you know, stuff like the Nobel's ODR1, that's a pretty unique circuit. Uh, so yeah, there's definitely overdrives that don't fit in these five categories. And then, the, of course, the amp in a box type is a very nebulous category. But yeah, overall, uh, I think the majority of overdrives on the market, you can fit in these five uh, overdrive types or groupings. So that's it, guys. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions or comments. Uh, what type of overdrive type do you guys prefer? Uh, let me know in the comment section below, and as always, thanks for watching.